Hello everyone, Daryl here with you tonight, looking again at my astrophotography equipment configuration. Uh, I presented this in another video where I was addressing primarily uh, how I went about you know, devising the configuration that I used relative to the fact that I had a very heavy camera and lens combination that I had not given proper consideration in my choice of Star Tracker. And what I'm saying in that is that uh, here you see my Nikon D850 DSLR attached to a Nikkor VR 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 lens. Uh, those two together, I believe, weigh in right around, I think, six and a half, maybe seven pounds. But the lens I normally use for astrophotography, or have thus far, is that one there on my other tripod. And that is, showing it fully extended with hood, a Sigma contemporary 150mm to 600mm lens. And that is fully a pound and a half heavier than the Nikkor lens, such that in addition to a few other pieces of equipment mounted along with the camera, gives me a payload of about nine pounds. The payload being anything you mount to your star tracker or any kind of astrophotography mount beyond, you might say, its own native components. So in my case, we're talking about the Skywatcher Star Adventurer Pro rated for 11 pounds. And the guidance in general is not to exceed that on your actual working payload by more than 50 to 60 percent so let's just call that five and a half to six and a half pounds roughly but right there we're already over that limit you know we're at seven plus pounds seven and a half almost eight other lands were at nine so whenever i was trying to figure out how to configure things i knew i would be adding a guide scope and auto guider camera but I did not want to add it to the weight above the polar axis of the scope, thinking that would, in fact, make things even harder for the um, star tracker to maintain its tracking accuracy. So I thought, okay, in the case of the Star Adventure Pro with this dovetail plate on it, it has a three quarter inch stud down here at the bottom, and that would allow me to mount, as I did, a 25 millimeter Arca Swiss dovetail plate and then where I'm using it just a flashlight here as an example I was able to remove the Vixen plate from my ZWO mini guide scope and screw in one quarter 20 ball end of the double ball arm into the scope base and then on the other end I had a small 25 millimeter Arca Swiss clamp attached so that gave me a way to very easily and quickly, you know, loosen the clamp and attach or reattach the guide scope. And that's worked well. And the weight of the guide scope camera and these mounts was about one pound. So my camera was already with that Sigma lens so heavy that the stock counterweight, the one kilogram, 2.2 pound counterweight and arm that came with the Star Adventure Pro was not enough to counterbalance it. So by adding another pound of weight from the guide scope and camera, that helped, yet it still wasn't enough. And part of that's because it's you know, actually mounted in here closer to the polar axis. So I wound up ultimately adding a fixed one pound counterweight that I made from some galvanized pipe fittings. And that gave me the solution I needed. It's actually worked out very well because with the fixed weight, it's kind of like the, the distributed mass along that counterweight arm, instead of all being out here at you know, some fixed point, actually seems to give a smoother counterbalancing of the imaging train. But uh, I was looking at my camera one day with that Sigma lens attached, and I can't say I really notice it as I look at, over at it right now. And the, the camera, I don't think, would really even be a factor. But I thought I had noticed a little bit of a sag or a very slight droop in the lens. And I thought, you know, I've seen telescopes mounted with uh, these rings along their body that helps keep them nice and secure, well-supported throughout their length. 
why not do that with the lens itself if I can find a suitable guide ring? And indeed I did. I went to Amazon and I looked and I found this Me Optics or May Optics 105 millimeter inside diameter guide ring with no base. It does have a hole mount uh, a hole that's uh, drilled cut into it, threaded for a quarter twenty thread that allows you to mount a base of your choice. So that was going to be the next step. I would need to mount this somehow. But then it's got uh, three aluminum screws that are tipped with nylon or Teflon, I'm not sure what, so that when you mount it around your lens or telescope, tightening down the rings against the body of the optical tube, you're not going to scratch or damage the finish. Now, one thing I will say with regard to that, so I don't forget, when you're mounting the ring around your lens, you want to tighten those screws down until they touch. And then I would say probably go no more than another quarter turn, just enough to firm the screws up a little bit against the scope or, or lens. So it gives it the support it needs, but is not, you know, squeezing down and potentially risking any kind of unseen internal damage on the uh, lens. But as you can see here with what I've already got mounted, I did find a solution for mounting that ring. And that is really, this is what I wanted to point out tonight was uh, this particular modification of adding the guide ring and this small 12 millimeter by 12 millimeter mini Arca Swiss clamp. This is from uh, one of the brands commonly found on Amazon called Leo Photo. Let's see if I can zoom in. The Leo Photo DC 12. It costs about $22. And on those rings, the Mayoptics brand is not currently available, but a pair of those were about $28. And I saw there's another brand called Omegon that is available, but with also a $14 shipping. So it's pretty stupid shipping price on a pair of rings. So I would say if you're interested in this idea and can watch out for the Mayoptics or even some other brand to come available that looks to be the same design, but without the cost of added shipping, then $28 is a good price to aim for. There's also a company called Astromania that sells the same pair of rings for friggin' $72. So that would obviously be a stupid purchase to make. You know, there's no point in spending another, what, $44, you know, just, just for the fun of it. There's lots of places to spend money in astrophotography, so why waste it on something like that if you can get a better price? Um, anyway... What was particularly unique about this uh, little photo clamp, and I forget now if I've even touched on this yet or not. I may have said it and be repeating myself. It will require a couple or one thin washer to take up the room enough that it gives you a working room to tighten its quarter 20 screw down into that ring. If you don't use washers, what I found is that when you tighten the clamp fully down against the ring, it's offset about 45 degrees and it needs to be parallel so that you can properly mount it on a dovetail plate and have the ring perpendicular to the dovetail plate, perpendicular to your lens. But what is really nice about this little photo clamp is that it actually has two quarter 20 mounting points. One at the center where we mount our ring, but there's also one off the end of it. And as you can see, I took another small rig double ball arm and I was able to screw the uh, bare quarter 20 head directly into the end of the clamp and then the other bare end directly into the foot of the, my ZWO guide scope. So that makes a highly effective mount for the guide scope with the exception now, of course, that ring, mount, uh, clamp, and scope are all kind of one integral assembly. So if you really need to move any of those between things, then you're probably going to be having to disassemble pieces. But uh, I've actually ordered another uh, Leo Photo clamp that's on its way that I will use to mount the guide scope independent of the guide ring. So that that way I can leave the ring, dovetail plate, lens all in place. And if I want to change to a different lens, you know, if I'm going between these two, for example, then I can simply transfer the guide scope from one dovetail plate to the other. Uh, alternatively, 
if you're not working with lenses like these that are mounted on a tripod collar and a long dovetail plate, and yet you still want to mount that guide scope somewhere, you can take an approach similar to what uh, Peter Zelenka did in one of his videos that I saw, where on his uh, Nikon D7780, he had an L bracket for it, and he could take the, uh, where did I put it? Let's just assume again, this flashlight is the guide scope. So he could take the clamp and just mount it to the L bracket on the side of the camera, except in his case, of course, the clamp and guide scope, scope were oriented such that he aimed along the same axis as the camera. Now, obviously here, I don't have a L plate. I'm taking a different approach because I do have an L plate, but it is for the battery grip version whenever I install the battery grip on my D850. So instead, I'm just using a long dovetail plate. I believe this is a, it's a 100 millimeter long Leo photo plate. And with that, I could actually come in underneath it and attach the clamp. And then again, still position the guide scope out to the side so that during the swing of the camera, hopefully there would not be anything hitting against other parts of the imaging train. But in any case, you've got various options there by having the guide scope with a small Arca Swiss clamp attached that would allow you to move it any place where you have an Arca Swiss plate as a mounting point. And the thinner the, the clamp, the better. This is still a quite strong clamping clamp, no issues whatsoever, and yet it's very low profile and just works wonderfully, in my opinion. So cost-wise, we're looking at, you can buy a pair of these ball rig, small rig ball arms, I know, for about $8, maybe $9. So let's just call it, just call it $10. So it's $5 for one clamp, might be 6 if you did buy a single clamp individually. Uh, so six dollars, twenty-two, I believe, for the Leo Photo clamps. Twenty-eight. I only see these rings in pairs, and a good price would be twenty-eight for the pair. So, you know, if you divide it, you know, four, fourteen. So that's about thirty-six, uh, fifty-one, fifty-two dollars. Yeah, probably about fifty-three or four dollars, I guess total. Not the cheapest solution for sure but highly functional and versatile. And uh, I just thought I would share that because any of you that are primarily shooting with conventional photography equipment that's very Arca Swiss friendly, this might give you a very viable working solution. And I have found that although that's about one pound of added mass above the polar axis of the tracker, it has not impacted my tracking accuracy any that I can tell. I did go out and do a, a test run shooting some images over an exposure range from two to five minutes of the Andromeda Galaxy the other night, and I saw no star trails at any of those speeds, uh, exposure times. Uh, I think one reason is because even though this has brought weight above the axis of the camera, it also allowed me to streamline my cabling so that running a dew heater for both lens and guide scope, two cables there, um, the USB connection and the ST4 connection, two cables there for the guider, and then a cable for the battery extender of my Nikon, as well as shutter cable and USB 3 cable, all of those could be neatly wrapped and bundled into one long you know, connection. And then I anchor those actually I tether them underneath the dovetail clamp of the Nikon. It's got a D-ring on that dovetail. So I run a Velcro strap right there through it. And that lets this bundle of cable kind of extend out stiffly. And it moves very cleanly, you know, through the right ascension arc as the camera is uh, moving through the tracking. And then the rest of it I can just neatly bring forward and you know, maybe tied off at some place here that just, it secures the whole cabling in place. And I think that could also be contributing to one reason that the tracking was po possibly even better. Uh, in the past, where I had at least a couple cables kind of hanging down, 
they could potentially get caught on the uh, counterweight arm extension. And I usually did what I could to try and minimize that. But nonetheless, there were still certain positions that if I wasn't careful, I might go out and I, I would see that the cables were, you know, dragging a little bit across the arm, which I think could only introduce possibly more vibration and show up in your images. So this, so this approach has really cleaned things up and works as far as I said, as far as I know, it just works really well. So there you go. I wish you great days and clear nights.